Hello everybody and welcome to Woopercast. This is episode 27 for December the 2nd, 2016. As always, I'm your host, Joe Yates. So, we've had a major event happen in the Pokemon community as of recently. Uh, we got brand new games, a brand new generation of Pokemon was released in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. And like I did with Pokemon Go uh, when that got released, I'm going to do a little mini review of the games here uh, for this week's podcast. I think it'd be nice to take a quick break from the TCG just to cover something that I'm sure a lot of you um, are playing anyway. So... Pokemon Sun and Moon released last week uh, in Europe and two weeks ago in America. Of course, I am European, so that's why my review is only coming out now. Uh, apologies to all you American viewers. So before I get into anything um, as to actual my thoughts on the game, I'm going to just lay out some ground rules and say a few things first of all. Uh, very first thing is, if you're wondering, do you review things often? Uh, yeah, I kind of do. Well, not super often. I have barely any time to update this, but I do actually have a blog where I review music and write some articles and stuff like that. Uh, it's really just for my own purposes to get my writing skills up and stuff like that. But if you want to check it out, I will leave the link in the description below. I don't update it very much. I do it whenever I can. I'm probably going to do like a year-end list of my favorite albums and stuff like that. So, hey, if you're into that, get excited. Um, second of all, this review will be spoiler-free. I will, every time there's something comes up where there's like a part of the story that might people might not want to hear about yet because they haven't reached it themselves yet, I will not be talking about anything that happens uh, beyond the early game, plot-wise. Game mechanics, I will be mentioning a few things here and there, uh, but I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with those, and almost all of them are introduced in the very early hours of the game anyway, so I don't think that'll be an issue. So no, don't worry about spoilers, you won't be pausing or skipping anything um, if you're afraid of knowing what happens in the story. I haven't even finished it myself, I'm almost finished it, actually. I'm on, like, the last island, I mean, Pony Canyon, for those of you who've made it that far so far. But I think I've still made it far enough that I can have some cohesive thoughts about the game, actually, anyway. Uh, anyway, as to the version I bought, I got Moon. I picked Rowlet as my starter. Rowlet is the only correct choice, actually. I don't think either of them, either Litten or Poplio, even come close to how cool Rowlet is. Especially, like, L- Litten's cool, but Incineroar? I'd I'd get him to Tauracat and be like, that's it, that's it, I don't evolve this guy anymore. He's fine as he is. Poplio I appreciate, but it's not something I'd play myself. So, on to my thoughts. On to the review. For ages, for 20 years, we have been getting Pokemon games. Generation after generation, you know, starting obviously all the way back in Red and Blue. The formula for these games has always been the same. It's always been... Kid, about 10 years old, goes battles this guy, goes battles 8 more people, gets all these gym badges, battles the Elite Four, wins, defeats some evil team along the way. Rinse, repeat for 6 generations, and remakes. And to be honest, it's been quite infuriating for me. I've gotten really, really bored of this structure and really tired of having the same formulaic stuff repeated over and over and over again. For me, the best all-time Pokemon game is Pokemon Silver. Um, Not just because of nostalgia as a kid or anything, but even looking back on things. If all of them follow the same formula, my favorite one really has to be something that came along so early yet was so just vast compared to all of the other games. That it, it was huge, it was so much content, the thrill of having a new generation and just seeing all these new Pokemon introduced for the very first time. I think in general the Pokemon in Gen 2 are some of the strongest like in terms of just design aspects that they can be um, across any other games. And that's why I think Silver has always stood out to me as being the best one, because even as you progress far down, I don't think the Pokemon series has actually moved that far away from where Silver was. I don't think I don't think the games mechanically, or even in terms of having an interesting plot, have even come close to Silver. I think it's just been really quite formulaic, and that all you're playing it for is... At times it just felt like I was just playing these games for the franchise. I was playing them because they were Pokemon games, and if this was... I don't know... Pocket Monster Go extravaganza on the iPhone, but it was the same structure, the same template. I don't think I'd play it because I'm like, this isn't a mainstream Pokemon game, this isn't, and that's really all I was playing them for at that point. And you reach a point where you start to wonder, why am I doing this? It, it, it just gets so boring, and it's partly why I play the TCG over the VGC, is because the TCG to me is constantly changing. And you, I don't know, it, it, I got very bogged down with having to do the same thing over and over again. So Pokemon Moon comes along. I'm excited for it because in all the trailers they've shown, in all of the hype that's been building up to it, it has seemed like this is the game that's going to break that mold. This is the game that's going to completely flip on its head what we know about Pokemon. And did it? Yes and no. Uh, Mostly yes and a little bit of no. 
In general, my impressions of Sun and Moon have been extremely positive. I absolutely have loved playing through these games, and I've enjoyed them significantly more in my head going back to anything that wasn't silver. I think they're right up there with some of the best ones they've ever made. Uh, and I can't wait for Stars, which is apparently going to be on the NX as well, but I suppose that's for an entirely different conversation. So no, I'm really, really enjoying Moon, um, and I think it's a fantastic game. So do I think that they flipped the formula on its head? What I mean by yes is partly the first thing I want to mention is for the first time maybe in Pokemon's history, this, this game has a story that I love. A genuinely engaging and interesting storyline. Cast your minds back to X and Y. Who gave a crap about that? I mean, seriously, did anyone... Comment below if you actually did enjoy the story. And again, this is a review. My opinions are my own. Don't hate me just because I shit on your favourite game or something like that. But did anyone really like the story of X and Y? Lazant and Team Flare, that was a whole load of bull. That stuff about AZ and the Floet, who gave a crap? It was just so boring and so hammed in and so... It didn't, nothing, it felt so loose and it was just there for the sake of trying to add emotional or some sort of weight and gravity to the actual mechanics of the game to try and detract from the fact that actually you're playing the same game you've been playing since 1995. Or whenever it was, Red and Blue came out. It just felt cheap. And I hated it. And as much as X and Y were a massive like graphical overhaul and like visual overhaul for the Pokemon series... Mechanically, it felt exactly the same. I know IGN at the time, actually, in their review, wrote that at the end of the day, it still feels too much like a Pokemon game, and they got an awful lot of stick for it from the community. But really, I agreed with them 100%. They needed to flip it completely on its head, and they did not. Moon is the game that X and Y should have been. This is exactly what they should have made when they made Pokemon X and Y. Honestly, I think the game's come too late for us. I think if we had had this when X and Y came out, it would have been amazing. I think... Just adding that little extra element of frustration maybe detracts from how positively I feel towards it, but other than that, I think I'm glad that we're finally at a point where they've decided, let's try something different. So, how? Other than the story being great, Lily, people, Lily, oh my god, Lily is amazing. Lily is my favorite Pokemon character ever, period, no question. She's she's just straight into the top charts. I don't even know who would be second on that list. That's how weak I find the stories of these games. Uh, it's just Lily, right up there. Fantastic. I love Team Skull. I, I love everyone's attitude towards Team Skull. I was really worried about them at first because it sounded like, oh look, it's a team of, you know, people with their pants too low, um, whose theme song is rap music that was written by people who sound like they've never heard of rap music before. And it was just, <laughs> it was really cringy. And I was really worried that people would be like, once you got into the game, they'd be like genuinely afraid of like Team Skull. Like, oh, there's those thugs and oh, they're, they're so intimidating. But I'm so glad that, like, in the game, the other characters' attitudes towards Team Skull is just, like, laughable. And just that these are these goofs, and we recognize that they're just not very strong at all. I think that's hilarious. Um, and that's another thing about the game, is the humor in it is so on point. I have laughed so much playing it. Captain Kiawe's trial is just one big joke, and it's hilarious. I loved it. Yeah, the humor's been fantastic. The characters have been fantastic. Everything feels so much more lively and colourful than it did in any other series before, and I really appreciate that. But then you get to the XY problem, is that they tried to do that with XY, and granted the story was a lot worse, but it didn't detract from the fact that the mechanics were still terrible. Not terrible, but just not different, and that was the big issue with it. And then Moon comes along, and yeah, the mechanics... I'm not going to say they're completely different, because ultimately you could just say the trials are the same as going to gyms and stuff like that. I don't think they are exactly the same, and I think it does allow it does allow Pokemon, or Game Freak, I should say, to be a bit more creative with how they approach these things. It doesn't have to be set in a building, first of all. It doesn't have to be set where you have to face an actual trainer at the end. You've got these new partner Pokemon, and the Z-moves, and you've got all these things that they can use to be a bit more creative as to how they approach uh, the trials, as opposed like the gyms felt a little more restricted in what they could do. As opposed to being like with the gym, it's like, yeah, you still have to beat these three players, but you might have to solve a puzzle to get past some wooden gates or something like that. And that was really the gimmick of that gym. And that just got bored after, God, like 16 years of playing through that kind of same formula. But I appreciate that they're a little more open to interpretation and they're allowed, I think, to fit these kind of things. Okay, cool, it did work. Sorry, my audacity went weird there for a second. Um, I think one of my issues, like, 
And the reason I think the storylines in Pokemon games up until now have been so bad is because for a lot of the time, the story seems to fit around the game mechanics. Like, they take the bare skeleton of a Pokemon game, and then they just kind of slot the story in and around it and piece it sort of together that way. Whereas with this, I think they've used, they started with the story, and I think that they use that to then branch off and say, the character goes here, now let's put in um, a trial, or something like that. Now let's put in the part where he earns this particular Z-move, or this particular Z-crystal, whatever they're called. Like, I feel like instead of the game being built around the story being built around the game the game has been built around the story and they've been or like together they've been they're working in tandem a lot better than they ever have been and again i think that's more to do with the gyms not being there makes the developers feel less restricted and stuff like that and i think that's a great great thing um and i think it worked really really well i feel like the i'm not just going to these trials for the sake of it i feel like i'm going to these trials because i'm accomplishing a goal and that's a lot better to me um and in that vein, the whole game itself is a lot less linear. I'm not saying playing through Sun and Moon is like playing through Grand Theft Auto or Geo's Cause. We're not going to get... Anyone who's been a fan of Pokemon for any length of time knows that we're probably never going to get our massive open-world Pokemon game that we'd all love. So accepting that, um, I think it's really great that the game, within some boundaries, is like, yeah, it is linear in the sense that you go here, then you go here, then you go here, but there's still a lot more to do in between, and there's no pressure to go to a certain area next. Like, again, I, I'm going to... It sounds like I'm ragging on X and Y a lot, but let's go back to X and Y. Um, and I think this is the thing I have to most compare it to. Like, look at the world map for X and Y. It's literally a circle. Like, you, you start at the at the bottom middle of the circle, and you work your way around. Once By the time you get back to that point, you've completed the game. You can literally see your progression in the game, and that's so stupid. Um, I shouldn't be able to have such a visual idea of when I'm going to finish this game or when the end is in sight. Um, and again, that's another negative point of that game. It's just more like... It feels like when I get to an area, I know where I'm supposed to go, but I also know that I don't have to go there. And the environments are so much bigger, it feels like I've got more scope to walk around. I I can have a bit more of time to decide what it is I want to do, what it is I don't want to do. I can have a look around for items, TMs, battle this trainer, use my Lapras to go over there and whatnot. Um, there's just a lot more to do in it. And I, it, it doesn't even feel like forced or anything like that. It feels like if you didn't want to do this and you want to just speed through the story, you can. But it lets you go at your own pace. Um, X and Y and Oras, again, I felt very much like... It was just some kind of continuous loop. It was just like, you go here, then you go here, then you go here, then you go here, then you go here, and then the game's done. Um, and I don't know, that didn't really please me that much. This, I just feel like it's more suited to going at your own pace. And that's great. And that's what it should be, because if you are really supposed to be a kid in this brand new world, um, and you're looking at all these amazing creatures that you've never seen before, having all these experiences, you don't want to rush anything. You want to take all of that in. And I think this game's allowing me to do that. And I really appreciate it. The ride pager, actually. The ride pager on this note of mechanics completely replacing TMs and HMs, genius. Absolutely genius, and I love it. What I really hated about the TMs and HMs was it made me more restricted in what I could put on my Pokemon teams. Um, it meant I couldn't get the full use out of Pokemon that I really wanted to use. It felt like, like in playing Oras, I always just picked Pelipper, because it was like, this thing, you know, surf and fly. <laughs> he does both. Why wouldn't I use one of these things? And then, oh, I need a water type on my team. Oh, I've got this Pelipper with Surf. It just felt so much like, do I want to use Pelipper? Not particularly, but there he is. It didn't. It was too easy of an option not to pick. The ride pager means I can have my team be whatever the hell I want. I don't have to be restricted by this kind of stuff. I don't have to commit HMs and TMs to Pokemon. I can just do my thing have access to all the same benefits with the right pager, but still keep a team that I can mold specifically for battle, and I think that's cool. Because uh, otherwise you're doing unnecessary grinding, you're trying to get the 7th Pokemon up and then just have a TM and HM slave, and that's boring, okay? Nobody enjoys that. Um, and I think a strength of an RPG is how little grinding you have to do. Uh, if anyone has played Tokyo Mirage Sessions, a game that came out mid this year on Wii U, uh, I'm a big fan of Atlas RPGs anyway. I loved that game. Partly because it didn't... I'm not saying it wasn't... It was far from the most difficult RPG of all time. But 
I never had to grind, like, once. It, it, I, I just put the game on hard mode, and I felt like every time I got to a new area, I was at the appropriate level, and I had the skills necessary to get through this area. Um, and I think that was great. That was one of my biggest compliments to that game. Um, and I'm probably going to end up comparing Pokemon more to Tokyo Mirage Sessions a bit later in this thing, because it was so good. But, yeah. So, I appreciate that a lot. And again, that allows them to build around the story a bit more, too. Uh, new Pokemon. I just want to give a quick shout-out to Solandic, because this guy is so cool. It was like the first thing in my head when I bought this game. I was like, I'm going to Google where I can get this thing. I'm going to go there. I'm going to find the female one so I can evolve it. I love Solandic so much. That thing is adorable. Um, and on top of adorable, the whole caring for Pokemon stuff with the new care mode, uh, I think is really good, too. I never used that Pokemon refresh, or what What was it called in X and Y and Oras? The... The one where you got to do the whole rubbing things with a stylus, but it didn't feel like... It felt so optional and so pointless that I never even bothered with it. Uh, whereas in this one, I like that when you're in battle, if you do have a Pokemon who you got to level to maximum affection, the the Pokemon and will start reacting to that, will start making comments. Uh, like my Raticate that I actually have in my game. Uh, I think I didn't feed him enough, so every time we get into battle, he starts shaking his head and he's like, he can't perform well, he doesn't have enough Pokebuffs. It feels like it's not like a necessary aspect, but there's benefits to doing it, and it's more encouraged, and it's easier to use, I think, than um, the same mechanic was in previous games. It actually reminds me a lot of um, Nino Kuni. They had a mechanic like this back... Nino Kuni on the PS3, um, that was a level 5 RPG. Of course, famous because Ghibli worked with them. How much hand of a hand Ghibli actually had in the game is a little ambiguous, but it was an alright game, not something I was a huge fan of, but they did have this really cool mechanic, which was a bit like feeding things Pokepuffs, in that it, it didn't necessarily up their stats, but it upped sort of like the likelihood of them performing certain things, if you get what I mean, and it was also used to help them evolve into their next form and stuff like that. Um, I think it's actually been impl it's very similar actually to how the whole care mode has been implemented into Sun and Moon, um, which isn't a bad thing at all. I, I really enjoy it in this, and I'm actually using it, whereas in previous titles I wasn't. So they're doing something right. Uh, the alone forms are great. I think this was a genius idea. My only request is that there be more of them, honestly, because I really love them. Uh, I think it's like it's a great countermeasure. It's a it's a great in between point for people who want the new Pokemon, for the new players who want to see. Um, oh, all these crazy new designs, but also people who want to keep using their favorite Pokemon that they have been using for years, like me with Raticate. And of course, people returning to this game who have only, their only exposure to Pokemon has been, come on, Audacity, don't screw up on me. Okay, I think we're good. So their only exposure of Pokemon that has been like, um, the early titles, the Gen 1, maybe Gen 2 titles. There's a lot of people like that, and Pokemon know that they're extremely popular right now and that they can market towards these people and you've got um, the option to use your favorite Pokemon from all the way back then and still have them in this game but still have these new aspects to them and still make them feel like new Pokemon. I do like Alolan Raticate. A lot. I know a lot of people don't like how, you know, general, general, generously proportioned. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, but I think he's cute. I think he's cute. Anyway... Z moves, I think, were implemented really, really well as well. I think it's super fluid. I honestly prefer to Megas because it feels less forced. Um, it doesn't feel like I have to do a certain Z move. It doesn't feel like I'm in a position where I have to pick Pokemon who have certain Z moves. Like with the with the other games, it was like, oh, but I want a Mega on my team. I have to pick this Pokemon because it has a Mega Evolution on it. There's aspects like that because they were so powerful. Uh, whereas with the Z moves, it's more like. I feel like I'm at my own ease, and again, I'm at my own pace to use them when and if I want to, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that this game lets me play my way where other Pokemon games didn't necessarily. Um, and also, Pokemon just gets too rooted in its own nostalgia sometimes. I think that's an issue that I've been pointing out a lot in this review so far, is that um, it likes to just fall back on what it knows and on tried and tested methods, and the Z-Moves was something a little bit different, a little bit off the cuff for them, so uh, I think it's a nice idea. I've enjoyed using them so far. I've enjoyed the mechanic, and I like having them over gym badges as well. I think that's been a nice touch um, to sort of, again, add to the feel of progression as the game goes on, the feel of making yourself stronger as the game goes on. Uh, the final major pro that I have is the soundtrack. I think it's fantastic. I love that, again, with the very first track that you hear is this, it sounds like something from, I don't know, Lilo and Stitch. 
it, it's this lovely like Hawaiian chorus and choral sort of noises that come out of it. It's great. The very as soon as you turn on the game, you get this like extremely traditional Hawaiian music, and it's like nothing that's been in a Pokemon game before. And even in the demo, I know a lot of people pointed this out that the music was very different. Again, I appreciate it. It's more to the roots of this game. It makes the game feel like a standalone title as opposed to a Pokemon title, and I think that's a big deal for it. Because pre like I've been comparing it a lot to Pokemon games so far. But I think we'll know Pokemon make a masterpiece game when we can start comparing it on its own terms. And I think this is the closest they've gotten, maybe ever. The biggest complaint that I have. Uh, first of all, actually, no, not the biggest complaint I have. The First of all, one complaint I do want to make. This game is slow. To get started, it was not easy to get into the game, and I know a lot of my friends will be making this comment too, is that it's so slow to get going. Um, you'll have tutorials on how to battle, how to catch Pokemon, how to go to the Pokemon Center, all stuff that if you've been playing for more than 20 minutes of any other Pokemon game, you just know. Um, I think it was completely unnecessary to go to these lengths to ease in brand new players, just a skip button would have been nice. Just, just. oh, do you know how to catch Pokemon? Yes. Okay, well, I won't show you then. <laughs> Something like that. It would have saved hours and hours of time. Uh, and by the time they showed me to catch out Pokemon, I had already caught, like, five. Like, <laughs> I've done more work than you, Kukui. Shut up. It's like, I know how to do this. It was just frustrating because it's, it's a big hump to have to get over to get into the really good contents of the game. Um, so that was super annoying. My biggest complaint has to be the difficulty level. I've said this about all of the other Pokemon titles bar the very early ones. Pokemon is too easy, and it has been for too long. It's partly because... Now, you could say this is meant to be a children's game, but then what's the issue with having a difficulty selector? I know Pokemon Black and White 2 had a difficulty selector, but you had to beat the game first to get it, so that doesn't count in my eyes. And I know there are fan games, but I want Game Freak to make one themselves that is just difficult. Like... I don't, I'm not saying make the game inherently difficult, I'm saying make it have an easy and hard mode. Or an easy, normal and hard mode. Something like that would be super good. That's all I want to see, is when I have to get... Like, again, let's look at Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Again, a game I love from this year, and something Atlas just do so well in their RPGs anyway. Um, and I'm not saying Pokemon is supposed to be compared to, like, major RPGs and stuff like that, because it's just not as mechanically deep, but that's... I'm going to anyway, because I think you could learn a lot from them. Um, one great thing about Tokyo Mirage Sessions and the Persona series in general is when you get to a new area, I always feel like I have to learn how to beat the enemies in that area. I always feel like, no matter how strong I am, even if I am like a few levels above the enemies I'm facing, which you should be anyway, I feel like these enemies will employ different tactics, and I'll have to get more clever, or I'll have to use a different team member. Or I'll have to use a different kind of move in order to work my way around these enemies. No matter how strong I am, it's not always going to work if I have to... You know, In Pokemon, I think your tactic is just mash your strongest attack over and over again and you'll win. That's not the case for a lot of other RPGs. And I'd like to see that more in Pokemon. Like, if you get into the VGC scene, that's huge. That's everywhere. You have to be... You can't just pick a move that does an unholy amount of damage and click it over and over again. That's not how it works, and you will lose plenty of games because people are more clever and more tactical than you. That's how that works, and I'd like to see that be employed into just the main series of the game and into the main story of the game. I'd like to be playing it and going into a new area and thinking, I wonder how I'm going to have to beat these Pokemon other than, oh, it's a water type, I'll switch to my grass type, I will kill it. It's That's as simple as it gets. And that's so frustrating in a, in a series that has so many great landscapes, areas, characters, Pokemon, of course. It, it's like, I feel like there should be more for me to think about. I'm kind of playing it on autopilot, to be honest, because it's just, no matter, I just look at the type of my opponent's Pokemon and go, alright, I'll pick this Pokemon, because it hits it for weakness, and then I'll hit this big attack. And I am playing on battle style, is on um, set, as opposed to shift. So when I knock something out, I don't get asked to switch, just to try and increase the difficulty for me a bit. But no, it, it, it's just extremely frustrating to play through like that. It, it, it really diminishes a lot of the other positive aspects that Pokemon bring to the table with the game. Because it makes me think, like, what's even the point if all I'm going to... Like, I'm getting told, oh, you're this amazing trainer and stuff like that. 
but I don't feel like an amazing trader. I just feel like someone who says, oh, this attack has 120 base power. I will use this. That, that's as deep as it goes. Um, then picking types and stuffs. One exception to this I do want to point out. One really, my favorite part of the game might be um, the Grass Trials boss totem Pokemon. That battle, I'm not again, I won't say anything about it in detail, but that battle was fantastic, and it was the only point in the game so far where I feel I've struggled. I actually haven't been knocked, like, um, I haven't lost a single battle yet in the whole game. But that battle was great, because of things like the partner Pokemon that come in and stuff like that, and of, like, the fact that what I was facing was just miles stronger than I was at that point, and that added a challenge for me, and that made me have to get more clever about how I was going to defeat it. That, to me, was what all of the battles should be like in this game. That's what a real boss battle should feel like. Again, Atlas, I love them. They do great boss battles, and that's what this was. I, I just want more moments like that, other than just, I hit this for weakness, let's hit it hard. The ghost-type boss battle actually ends up sort of coming up like that as well uh, but that might have just been because I planned it really poorly when I played through it because I forgot what type it was but <laughs> I don't know it's and then again like speaking on the whole too easy thing and about how people in the game will look at Team Skull and be like oh they suck and then look at like the Kahuna or how and be like oh they're really good and like no they're not they also suck they really suck. It, it, like, every time you play against Howie, he's like, I'm going to get stronger than ever. And everyone's like, yeah, Howe, you're really good. You're one of the strong strangers on the loader. And then you play Howe, and he sucks. And he, it never feels like Howe is actually getting better. It just feels like the Pokemon he's using increase in a few levels and increase in a few stats. That's it. They, they, you know, he doesn't actually get any better at the game. He just gets more powerful Pokemon. And he just uses slightly more powerful attacks. And he, at no point does he ever actually get tactical about it. At no point does he ever force me to get tactical about it. Like, I just, I don't want the difficulty. I want it to be difficult, but I don't want the difficulty just to come from facing things that are of a higher level than me. I want it to come where I have to start employing tactics in the main game. And it just hasn't happened yet. And if you want that, you do have to play VGC. Um, on top of that, no one ever has a team of six Pokemon. The most I think I've faced so far is, like, a team of four. And it's, that's just stupid. <laughs> I'm already at such an inherently massive advantage because I've got way more Pokemon than everyone else. It's like, just, just get six Pokemon, God damn it! Um, I never feel at a disadvantage. I feel like the, my opponent is always at the disadvantage in every single game I play, and that's just not on. That, that is just not good enough. It's so, It's an should be an easy fix. I don't know, maybe hardware limitations or something like that is stopping them from including a hard mode, but I just really want to see it. I really want that in the game. Um, yeah, I think that's actually just going to do it for my complaints, though. Like, overall, I think it's a flawed game. I don't think it's a perfect game, but I think it's a massive step. I, I, it's exactly the game. Not exactly the game, but it's definitely a game that I'm glad Game Freak made. It's a game I'm really happy to be playing through, and I am. Other than the easy difficulty level and me feeling like I'm playing it on autopilot, I think it still feels really fun to play. The story is so engaging, it's so wonderful and so colourful, and Lily is great, Lily, Lily, Lily is so great. Um, as are the get in the bag memes, keep, keep posting them people, please, I really do love them. Um, yeah, those are really my thoughts on it. To sum it up, it's a great game, it's flawed but it's in the right direction. It's a lot better than anything they've produced in the last god knows how many years. I think it's the best Pokemon game since Pokemon Silver. Um, I think Silver still stands there at the top because, to me, Silver was actually difficult, and it was super fast. It didn't feel like... You know, especially at the time when it's coming out on the Game Boy Color and stuff like that. You know, it, for its time, it was amazing. It's timeless. It's held up. It's still as good today as it was back then. Um, and I think... They're still trying to reach those heights again. They still need what they. I think the game that they really need to make, for it to be great in its own terms, and for me to not just compare it to other Pokemon games and say it's great within this vacuum. I need a Pokemon game that I can look at and say this is great in terms of games. And I haven't been able to do that for quite some time. Maybe it's because I'm partly a fan of the series. Maybe it's because I'm invested in it. But I think it's also partly because they're just stick to their roots so much. And it's great to see them finally try and move away from that. Um, a flawed game, but still a very, very fun game. A very good game. And a game that I'm happy to play through, and a game, I think an experience that I will find a lot more memorable um, than 
just about any of the other ones in the franchise. So, yeah, that those are my thoughts on it. Guys, what do you think about Pokemon Sun and Moon? Do you like it? Do you hate it? What would you rate it? Um, yeah, next week, what am I going to do? Next week, there will be nothing. Look, London Ninja Continentals are coming around. That's going to take up the whole week. I'm not going to be able to do any videos that week. Apologies. After that, we'll get back to deck analysis, podcast stuff like that. Um, I'm going to do a recap of London, obviously. Um, and also, as for the Let's Play, I'm probably going to do Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, because it's super fun. It seems to evoke nostalgia for a lot of people. Um, the storyline of that game is just stupid. So stupid. Um, even the mechanics of that game. Even if you know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! You don't know how to play Forbidden Memories. Trust me, that game is hilarious. Uh, so I'm going to play that. It'll start after London. It won't be until the week after we get back from London. So um, look forward to that. Someone did suggest play Pokemon Pinball. Uh, I do want to say, yes, I love Pokemon Pinball. Great game. I don't know how entertaining it will be to watch someone play Pinball, because I cannot control anything that happens within Pinball. I just press the fli the flippy buttons. The buttons that flip the, you know, the sticks that you flip in Pinball. There's probably an actual name for them other than the flippy buttons, but you know the ones I mean. I just press those over and over again and hope for the best, and I'm not sure how entertaining that would be. Um, great suggestion, though. We love that game. All right, that is going to do it for this week's podcast. Thank you so much for watching. We will be back not next week, but the week after, and so on and so forth. Facebook.com slash Woopercast, SoundCloud.com slash Woopercast, we're also on TuneIn, Stitcher, and YouTube.com slash Woopercast. If you're watching from one of those outlets, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you next time.